Action. Okay, welcome to the shack. And today, well, we're going to be looking at a rotator here in a moment. There's a rotator, G450, Yesu. It's the control box. And I've been putting in a uh, control board here so we can control it from the computer. So that's what we're going to be looking at in a moment. I'll show you the wiring and I'll show you it working connected to the computer. Let me just pop you up there. I've just filled up the Station Master mug with coffee. Check out the merch store if you haven't already got yourself one. Right, in the background you can see Station Master version 3 is this uh, Matrix Star Waterfall type thing going on. Uh, you can actually change the colour. Let me just show you. So you can right click, change the hue, which changes the, the sort of colour of the background. Blue, green, red, pink, whatever. Or you can rainbow style. Anyway, I've gone for Matrix at the moment, looks quite cool. Sort of a green Matrix sort of colour. And you can adjust levels. And you can adjust the background noise. You know, so you can make it look pretty, basically. Anywho, that's Station Master 3. That's what we're working on in the background. And that will be, I don't know, going to take a while. A few weeks yet, <laughs> that's for sure. There's a few things coming out with Station Master 3. The dashboard, hopefully, will be ready by then as well. And there was something else that I've forgotten about. Hopefully, I'll remember in a minute. Now, this is a rotator controller in Station Master 3. If I put it over here. Okay, so nice big rotator controller. So what we have here is red is the desired direction that you want to point to when you press the turn button. The blue is the current direction the antenna is currently pointing to. If we click a direction and hit turn, the blue line will turn as the rotator turns to meet the red line. That is what will happen in a moment when we plug the rotator in. But in order for this to actually work, you obviously need to be able to connect your rotator to the computer, which is all well and good. But if you've got a rotator that doesn't have a USB interface or a serial interface or something like that, then you've got a problem. But what you can do is get yourself one of these. It's called an ERC version 4. I assume it stands for Electronic Rotator Control. It's from a guy in Germany and it's dubdubdub.schmidt. Uh, hyphen alba dot de not sponsored not associated with these people in any way shape or form i've just bought this off the internet same as you would if you went to their website let's say you bought yourself this erc version 4 board which is this here all it is is a load of relays and some wire connectors and a usb plug let's not overcomplicate it we connect five wires one two three four, five, that's all it is. Okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. Here is the board. Make sure it's in focus. We've got the USB plug this end, that plugs into the computer, it's just a printer cable. This is like a sensing wire. Uh, it doesn't matter what the wires are, does it? We just need to know where to join them. So the two wires here, they connect round to the back. We'll see where they go in a moment. And then you've got three wires coming off the, off the back here. Now the three wires, the two center pins of the outside relays, the two center pins are the same. You know, they, they join together, which is this jumper wire here. And then you have this wire that connects those. So effectively this wire is connected to the center of both of these relays. Just remember that. It's connected to the center of both of these relays. So we'll forget that now. The black wire, if I hold it up this way now, USB pointing to the floor, this other wire, which is the black wire, so now we're connecting to the two inner, innermost terminals. So we've connected to the center two, we're now connecting to the inner two most terminals. So first off is this black wire, and that goes round the back, and we'll see where that goes in a moment. And then we've got this blue wire, that goes round the back as well. So this one here that connects to the two centre pins, this one here is coming from the centre pin of the relay and it comes across here and it connects to the centre wire of the switch. So you've got the switch for turning right, the switch for turning right, there are three wires on the back of it, 
you connect to the middle one. You can't go wrong. Just connect to the middle one, which is a red wire on this rotator. Your rotator might be different. Remember, this is specifically for this rotator controller. So what I did there was cut the wires, put some heat shrink over it, join the wires back together again with this blue wire in there as well, soldered it, slide, slid, the hitch, uh, slid the heat shrink back, and then warmed it up to shrink it. Be careful because these blue switches here, they will come apart very easily. If you pull these wires too hard, you'll find the switch comes flying apart, which it did for me, and you'll have to put it back together again and squeeze it together. Uh, they are designed to come apart, so it's no damage. It's just annoying. So just be careful when you're stripping these wires or cutting these wires. So it's center to center. Just remember that the center wire of the switch goes to the center of both relays. That's this end. That's all, of, all we're doing on this side. If we flip round. All right, let's put it where you can see the whole thing. There's two pairs of wires that we're gonna connect to. We'll focus on the ones that connect to this red and black. So remember the red and black are connected to this terminal here. The red is closest to the USB end of the board. So those red and black wires connect to the brown and white wires that come through from the plug at the back. And I've connected the brown one to my red wire. Again, I just pulled the wires out cut them, put on some heat shrink, join them back together again with these extra wires connected, soldered them, slide the heat shrink back up and, and warm it up. That's it. That's, how, that's all you do for those. The hardest two are these here. So underneath here, you can see we have a red, sorry, this blue wire, which goes to, right. So this one here, this blue, wire here which is the inside of the right relay the inside terminal this blue wire connects to the fat green wire that comes in from the back of the plug it's the fat green wire there's only one green wire and it's quite a thick one there's also a thick yellow wire and that is the remaining wire that's this black one that connects to the other inside terminal on the relay. So we're looking at the two inner wires, which are black and uh, blue. They connect to the green and the yellow wires that come in from the main plug at the back. The main plug that goes off to the antenna, I might add. Just for clarity, and going back to the other two, the thin wires, these two here, red and black, go to the brown and the white wire that come in from the back plug that goes off to the antenna rotator. There we go, that's it. So you've got four wires on this side and one wire on the other side. Now in terms of mounting this, I, I've not mounted this yet obviously, but it gets mounted in here. It basically, it will go in there, that's where it's designed to go. And then you drill a hole at the back and two little holes for some screws. You've got a mounting clip that comes with the board and you mount it in the back as a permanent installation. I haven't done that bit yet. I need to buy some tools to, to do that and then we're good. But this does work, we'll plug it in now. Okay, rotator will go here so we can see that turning. We have the rotator controller. I've changed the plug from the Euro plug or the American plug to a proper three pin. I think there's a three, uh, three amp, might be a five uh, fuse in there. So we'll plug that in a moment once we've got everything else plugged in. That will go in last. Not the mains, but the main rotator plug. No, we'll not do that. <laughs> By the way, if you're ever having RF problems on your USB cable, so this is a USB cable bog standard printer cable type thing off of Amazon, just a cheap cable. If you've got RF problems, when you key up your, you know, your, your keyboard starts going clunk or your, your cat control stops working, just get one of these 240-43 mix toroids. These are the same thing that 
go into many in-fed half-wave transformers. It's exactly the same thing. Just wrap your cable around as many times as you can. The more the better. And that will usually get rid of your RF problems on your USB cables. So all, all, all USB cables in shacks or portable operations should have one of these on it if you're intending to run, you know, if you're going to run more than 25 watts, <laughs> then uh, one of these is a must, to be quite honest. Right, we have mains voltage. Do not touch. Okay, power on. So we'll just test it. Let's come in a bit closer. So you can see what's going on here. Right, let's get a good angle. Right, you've got the rotator in the foreground. You've got the rotator controller here and you've got the rotator controller software here. First off, we'll just turn the rotator, make sure it works. Okay, that's turning clockwise. You can see the needle moving here. Anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. And we're turning. Okay, so we've got the rotator plugged in, the controllers plugged into the computer, the drivers installed. We've configured Station Master to know that this rotator's there. And now what we're going to do is just control the rotator from software. Okay, so you sit there. Actually, we'll bring you around here a bit so you can see the software as well. So we've got the rotator there. And what I will do is bring Station Master over here. Set that up. Bring over the rotator control. Make that nice and big so you can see it as well. And while we're here, let's just change this waterfall style to green because I quite like green. Filter out the noise. There we go. Happy days. Get rid of the title section. So this is the new Station Master version 3 I'm working on. It's got full integration with SDR Play. Well, it's got integration anyway. I don't know if it's full. <laughs> it works though. Let's see if the rotator works. I can see that the blue line is off center at the moment. So as I turn the rotator manually, we should see the software updating. There we go. So I'm not touching the computer. As I turn the rotator, the computer recognizes the rotator is turning and it's moving the blue line. That's all being done through this new control interface. Let's go back here so you can see the screen. I know the dials don't match up yet, that's because it's not calibrated, but you can see that the software is detecting that the rotator is turning and it's updating accordingly the blue line. The blue line is where are we pointing now? The red line is where do we want to go in the future? So we'll stop there. So the next trick is when I click this red, if I put this red line over here and press turn, and then within a second or two, there we go. The rotator is turning, I'm not touching anything. It's turning by itself, all controlled via the computer. I've not fully calibrated it all yet, so it might not get the exact positions right, but in essence, you know, the system works. Let's see if it stops at the right place. This is all, yeah, bang on. So there we go. Station Master version three, rotator controls. You can control up to four rotators in Station Master version three and four rigs, a TCI interface, Fetus. You've got the waterfalls, SDR play. You, there's loads of stuff coming in Station Master version three. So look out for that in, in the coming months. It's still under active development at the moment. So this is just a sneak peek of what's going on in the G5 STU shack with Station Master version 3, electronic rotator controller for the Yesu G450C with the G450 Yesu rotator. So what else is going on in the shack at the moment? Well, not a lot actually. The bench is pretty empty. Uh, last time you were here, I had the 7300 apart and I was going to try and, you know, bring the waterfall display out onto a separate display. I, I, I got fed up of doing that. I ended up needing the 7300 to do some testing on Station Master anyway. So I put the lid back on and I am able to get the waterfall display pulling out of there onto the computer. That's not a problem at all. And to be honest, for what I want, that's, that's 
you know, that's what I want to do. Having a separate monitor for a 7300, I'm not interested in that. Doesn't, you know, that doesn't appeal to me. But having it pulling in the waterfall onto the computer for the 7300, that is something I want for Station Master. And I have managed to do that as well. So happy days. We're making progress. Uh, the display thing is not on at the moment in the background. I plan to release that when Station Master 3 comes out. So there'll be controls within Station Master version 3 that will allow you to do things on the screen as well. But you will be able to use the Station Master dashboard independently of Station Master if you want. Anywho, that's it from the G5 STU Shack. Happy Sunday. And uh, well, we'll see you next week or the week after or whenever I next make a video. So here we go. That's a cool picture, isn't it? G5 STU in the shack. See you next time. Bye-bye.